Sjogren's is a complex disease. It is complex to diagnose, to treat, and to live with. And in the research field, it offers even more challenges. With over 500 researchers working worldwide in Sjogren's, we have seen great advancements in what we know about the disease. However, we still have many more questions to answer. We brought together some of the leading Sjogren's research experts so we could learn more about what goes into Sjogren's research, what we know, and what we are still striving to learn. It's a very interesting disease. You know, it's kind of a mystery. It's complex, and there's a lot of things we don't know, but we can learn those things. And so uh, that is that makes it kind of fun for a researcher when you are in the lab and you've learned something new that no one's ever known before, and then the textbooks need to be rewritten. And so there's you know some excitement in being able to contribute to that and just the overall knowledge that hopefully will help people. Sjogren's research is rapidly advancing. We know much more than we ever did about Sjogren's, and we have great momentum in clinical trials for new therapies to treat Sjogren's. A decade ago, very, very little was happening, and now it just seems to be snowballing, and we have so many wonderful collaborations, and we have um, the Sjogren Syndrome Foundation right now is working with nine companies th that have therapies either in the pipeline or actually in clinical trials. And so we as a foundation are working so hard to make sure that those clinical trials are as successful as they can be. Researchers have many areas of interest in Sjogren's with some creating great promise for learning more about the disease. There's a tremendous interest right now in the Sjogren's field about uh, identifying biomarkers that can be utilized to um, identify early cases, in other words, people who would uh, be most responsive to treatment, and biomarkers to help the uh, researchers distinguish between symptoms related to uh, pre-existing damage to the moisture-producing glands and the other organs and active ongoing inflammation. Sjogren's patients often have different symptoms, manifestations, and progression. So researchers are continuing to analyze and compare patient data. There's a lot of focus now on trying to understand subsets of patients. Mm -hmm. um, and this is really important because we want to get the right drugs to the right patients. Determining different subsets in Sjogren's will surely help with clinical trials while we also continue to learn more about the patient population. The most exciting stuff is defining Sjogren syndrome based on all these sophisticated measures of the immune system. Research in Sjogren's has made great strides in recent years with some of the most groundbreaking advancements coming in genetic research. We've been doing genetic studies for quite a number of years. These studies usually take thousands of patients and thousands of controls and we do genetic typing and then we compare them to try to find genetic variants that are different in, uh, in the patients. And so we've been doing that um, for quite a number of years. We've been working with, we're now up to about 3,000 uh, Sjogren's patients included in our studies. We've had about 15 groups that have helped us from around the world. We are uh, working on expanding that to over 25 groups. And hopefully in the next few years, we'll expand those studies to where we have almost 10,000 Sjogren's patients involved in those studies. So those that scale of study is really where we need to be to be able to identify genes. We know that uh, there are at least 15 genes that have been very well established. We think there's probably more than 100, so we have a ways to go to identify new ones. But the key to really understanding new genes is that once we know what, a specific, what specific genes are involved in the disease, it tells us something about the biology. It tells us maybe this cell type is really important or this particular kind of immune response is really important. And because genetics really gets at the cause of the disease, that's what we really want to know with these studies. Researchers from different centers around the world regularly come together to compare research and create new collaborations. There's dozens of groups around the world, and there's new groups uh, that come on board all the time, and that's really exciting to see. Um, a lot of other autoimmune diseases have even more research groups. So on one hand, um, the world is a little smaller in Sjogren's research, but it is changing, and that's, that's great for everybody. Um, it's also really nice because there's a lot of people that are very willing to collaborate together, and that makes a huge difference when you're trying to do research, and you know everybody's helping everybody, and that just 
you know, hopefully makes our science better in the end and we can make more progress. More and more progress is being made as researchers compare their findings and harmonize their data. We have some excitement out there on the part of industry. We have excitement on the part of investigators who want to get involved and hope that they can help make a difference. And most of all, what I hope is, is that we have excitement on the part of patients because to me, this is what gives us hope. And this is what gives us hope for a better life. Sjogren's research has made great advancements in recent years. We are finding out more about the disease from a molecular level, while also learning more about the different subsets of patients and what similarities they each have. And most exciting is that all of this research is leading to more pharmaceutical companies being interested in looking for potential therapies for Sjogren's. To learn more about Sjogren's research or clinical trials for new therapies, please visit Sjogren's.org. Thank you for joining us on Exploring Sjogren's.